Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. We are here in room four of the Moldering Barrow. Uh, we have come across a, a number of Chaos Fanatics. What is that? Nine Chaos Fanatics in the company of a Dark Lord of Zictul, who has 12 life. Uh, and is level 11. He does four attacks, two damage each attack. Um, what we would normally do is roll to see if this is the final boss, but uh, we are after a tentacled brain who uh, I know is going to be the final boss. So what I'm going to do is um, when we come across a boss normally, we we rolled minions here, and the minions have a chance of being with a boss. So, what uh, if we roll a boss normally? I'll give it a chance of being the tentacled brain of being the final boss before I roll what that boss is. Otherwise, this tentacled brain will be in the last dungeon of the room. It'll be the final boss. So, with that out of the way, now the rules for uh, fighting minions and a boss simultaneously is. You choose one of your characters to be your champion, and that character is locked in Mortal Kombat with the boss while the other uh, party members fight the minions. So, and when once they defeat the minions, they can join in on the attack with, uh, with the boss. So, the character I have with the highest defense is my cleric, Elric, and while I'm really reluctant to do that to my cleric <laughs> uh i uh nobody else well jim's defense is two and elric's defense is three and jim has 11 life you know what i'm gonna put jim i'm gonna put jim on the dark lord because i need i need elric to be able to heal folks and if he's off by himself um well, he could heal himself Mm -hmm. We're putting Jim against the Dark Lord of Zictul. That's just the kind of thing Jim would do. He sees the boss and he heads straight for him. Okay, so Jim is fighting the Dark Lord of Zictul. Everybody else is fighting the Chaos Fanatics. And here we go. Okay, this is insane. Um, all right, Throck, uh, do we rage? Mm, not on the minions, I don't think. What are they? Level 7. Okay, what, 1. <laughs> okay, Throck misses. Uh, Elric. 8 explodes. 7 explodes. That's 15. Another 8. 23. 28. Uh, minus 1, because he has that uh, m minus 1 to attack from the House of Horrors. 20. Did I... <laughs> Now I've forgotten already what I rolled. Was that 23 or 28? I think it was 23. 8, 7, 8, 5, right? 16 plus 7 is 23. 28 minus 1 is 27. Plus his attack of 2 is 29. Um, so that's 4. <laughs> he takes out. Elric, is at, our cleric, is having nothing with these chaos fanatics. I don't know, maybe he's got something against the Cult of Chaos. I would say that's definitely the case, because <laughs> he just laid waste to four of these guys in one attack. All right. Um, now, the thing is, they won't, they won't flee. I think the rule, the morale rules is, yeah, minions with a leader will not make a morale roll until their leader is killed or flees. So they're staying in the fight. Uh, unless Jim manages to single-handedly take out the Dark Lord. So, okay, so we're, we're with Blesk now. Um, I think she's going to go ahead. Well, yeah, because there's no chance of them fleeing. Let's see. Let's see if she... I'm looking at the rules for the sleep spell. Um... Normal spell attack. If it hits, we defeat one boss or D6 plus her level of minions. So her spell attack is uh, plus her level. 
So we're going to roll an 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. That hits. Okay, so she takes out D6 plus her level 1 plus 5 is 6, but that's enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. She puts all of these Chaos Fanatics to sleep. That's outstanding. Okay, they're defeated. And now um, uh, we need to mark down that we used a spell. So, on to the Dark Lord. I think I can hide. I'm going to hide this. Okay. Dark Lord of Zicto. Oh, Jim. Jim gets in his attack, and he's attacking with his two-handed sword. Oh, see? I'm forgetting about switching weapons again. Bless, uh, she cast a spell, so she's okay. She didn't have to switch weapons, but Jim has his bow equipped. So, um, his first turn is charging up to this Dark Lord and drawing his two-handed uh, sword. So, that's it for him for this round. So, the Dark Lord gets four attacks, and uh, since, and they're all on Jim, I believe. So, here we go. Five. Jim's first defense roll is a seven. And that's, you know, what we should have done is cast a protect spell on him, but oh well. Seven. And we have to beat, we have to beat 11. So that's, that's two points of damage. That's a fail. That's four point. Oh my goodness. Six point. Ah, Jim. Jim just took eight points of damage. And he already had two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's down to one, one life with his cleaver. Is that right? I think that's right. I think they're locked in battle while the other three were on the minions. So I think all four attacks go to him. Ouch. Well, we know what Elric is doing this turn. <laughs> this turn. Okay. Uh, Throck. Right? It's our turn. So Throck can join the fight on the Dark Lord. Do we rage? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm saving the rage. Three plus uh, five is eight. That's not enough. We need an 11 to hit this guy. Wow. Okay. Um, Elric is healing Jim. The heal spell does D6 plus a level. Come on, six. Three plus five is eight. So Jim takes eight points of healing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that, he's uh, he's feeling a lot better. But yeah, okay, uh, okay, Jim. <laughs> Those were horrible rolls. Three ones in the... Okay, and now we have to mark down that we used the healing spell. Okay, Blesk. Um, does she cast a lightning bolt? I think so. Because we need... I mean, if she hits with a lightning bolt, she'll do two wounds to the boss. So, she's going to roll a d8. Oh, she fails. Goodbye, black eight-sided die. You... <laughs> Um, you are not helping me. All right, she used a lightning bolt that did not hit. Um, and now Jim. Jim rolls with advantage with his two-handed sword, and it explodes. Fantastic. Eleven plus his attack is six, so that's seventeen minus one is sixteen. He does one point of damage. Oh my goodness. All right, well, at least now we'll spread the damage over everybody. The Dark Lord attacks. Um, all right, Throck, four, plus his defense of one is not enough, so he takes two points of damage. One, two. Uh, Elric, five, plus his defense of three is eight. That is not enough, so... Elric takes two points of damage. Blesk. Um, eight, she, that explodes. Eight, so that explodes again. That's enough. So Blesk dodges the 
the giant cleaver of death. And Jim, Jim explodes. Okay, and Jim dodges as well. He learned his lesson. Get out of the way of the cleaver. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Throck, here we go. Six. Uh, and that's a masterwork two-handed hammer, so it explodes on a six. Eight plus his attack of 13. Uh, that's enough to do a point of damage. Okay, Elric. Do we want to heal anybody? I think we're. I think we're gonna keep going. Four plus two is six. That's not enough to hit him. Uh, Blesk three. That's not enough. That would be a nine. She needs an eleven. And Jim. Oh, he rolls. Uh, that was a two and a five. He gets a five. Plus six is 11. That hits. Right? Yep. 11. So Jim hits. So the Dark Lord has taken three. If we hit him four more times, he'll go down to level 10. <laughs> oh, we need some levels. <laughs> These XP rolls would be nice. I wonder if I get to do this XP roll right now. I think we'll do it at the end of the encounter. All right. The Dark Lord of Ziktool. Four attacks, one on each party member. Throck fails to dodge and takes two points of damage. Um, Elric fails to dodge and also takes two points of damage. This is Harry. Blesk. Oh, she fails as well. Phenomenally fails. That's... Two points of damage, and Jim, eight, explodes. Nine, plus his defense is two, is 11. That's not enough, because he needs to beat 11. So he takes two points of damage. One, two. Elric. Okay, Elric's hurting. Um, all right. Uh, Jim, no. Yes, Throck. Here we go. Four plus his attack of five is nine. That's not enough. Elric. Do we heal Elric? Do we wait to see? I think we'll wait one more round. Five plus his attack of two is seven. That's not enough. Um, Blesk. I think we'll try a lightning bolt again. No. One, two. I think we gotta we gotta try a lightning bolt again. Here we go, Blesk. Seven, that explodes. Eight, nine, plus fifteen, that hits. And it's a lightning bolt, so it does two damage. That's outstanding. Uh, she's only got two spells left though. But if we can do two more damage to this guy, it'll really help. Okay. Uh, Jim is going to roll with advantage. Oh, and I forgot about Blesk's 8 that she can use. That's a 4. Plus a 6 is 10. That's not enough, right? Yep. Okay. All right. It's the Dark Lord's turn. <laughs> uh, 8. Oh, this is Throck's defense. 8 um, plus 6 is 14. That easily defends. Okay. Good. Elric, two. <laughs> he, take, he takes two points of damage. Yep. Elric's going to heal himself on the next turn. Um, and Blesk, five, plus her defense of six is 11, but it's not enough. She needs to beat 11. So Blesk takes two points of damage. All right. And Jim... Four plus his defense of two is six. That's not enough, so Jim takes two points of damage. All right. I'm looking real quick. Uh, healing potion rules. Because everybody has a healing potion. Um, can be used in combat, but uses the whole action. Can't be used by barbarians, of course. So, and what do they do? Uh... How much do they heal? Potion of healing. 
will restore a character's life to its initial level. Okay, so it completely heals them. Okay, so Elric, but it uses the whole action. That's the trade-off. Otherwise, Elric could cast a heal, and one, one, two, three, four, five. He'll do at least his. He'll do at least six points of healing with his heal spell. Um, I don't know. I don't know what he'll do there. But let's see. Let's see what Throck does here. We're attacking five plus five is ten on his attack. That's not enough, right? Right. Okay, uh, Elric is either going to drink his potion or use his heal spell. Let's, let's, uh, either way it uses the turn. So, and he's almost dead. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's drink the healing potion. Okay. He drinks the healing potion. He is completely healed. And that's his turn. And now Blesk. So I think, um, does she use another lightning bolt? If she does two points of damage, that would be, that would be awesome. I think she's got to try. Six plus her at uh, attack. It's a normal spell attack, right? Yeah. Six plus six is 12. That hits. <laughs> Blesk is the hero here. Her second lightning ball attack hits, and the the boss is down to level ten. Excellent. And Blesk has one spell remaining. And okay, Jim rolls with advantage that's an eight that explodes nine plus his attack is six that's 15 minus one because he's a feared is 14 um so that does one damage oops one two three four the boss is down to four health okay everybody's defending throck six Plus his defense of seven is not enough, so he takes two points of damage. And Elric rolls a four plus seven. That's not enough. So Elric takes two points of damage. And Blesk rolls a four plus her defense of one is five. That's not enough. So she takes two two points of damage and jim three plus his defense of two is five that's not enough everybody's getting smacked around by this dark lord okay we need to do four damage guys oh we should have done a morale roll we should have done a morale roll where four against the abyss let's see boss table dark lord of zik tool Four attacks, treasure plus one. Uh, each hit. Oh. I completely forgot that Elric gets to re-roll one of his defense um, rolls. So we'll use that at some point. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, each hit yeah, scores two. So here's his morale roll. It's normal morale roll. One to three, he flees. He flees. Excellent. Okay. We we did enough damage to this guy. That was harrowing. We defeated all of his minions, and then uh, he'd taken enough damage that he decided he's out of there. So that's... We get two XP rolls for the boss, and one... Um, I'm going to write these down. XP rolls. Because we'll come back to that because we've, we've got a bunch of treasure to do. And we need to figure out what to do about our health situation or lack thereof. Okay, let's see what the Dark Lord had. Treasure plus one. If I recall, the treasure table's back here. Eight. 
Six. He has one random magic item from the Abyss Magic Treasure Table. Abyss Magic Treasure Table. There's six things here. One. Amulet of Protection versus Undead. Um, the wearer has plus one defense rolls and saving rolls against attacks by undead monsters. It may be sold for 250 gold. Multiple amulets of the same type do not stack, so a character may only use one. I think it's obvious. Uh, we'll give that to Elric. Amulet of Protection. I'm going to write down on our chart over here. Amulet of Protection versus Undead. Amulet. And that's from Four Against the Abyss, page 51. I'm going to put that on Elric. Okay. Plus one defense and saving rolls against attacks by undead. Okay. That should come in handy. Um, we also defeated those. Uh, that's special features. Vermin. Here we go. We defeated the Chaos Fanatics. So they have normal treasure. Oh, did I add one to that amulet? I, I think I'm forgetting some. I did not. One random item from the magical defense. So it will say that the uh, amulet came from the chaos minions. Um, and now we'll roll D8 plus 1. Eight, nine, eight, uh, one random item from the magical defense table or gold pieces of your choice. We'd really like to pay off our debt, but uh, one random item from the magical defense table. Let's see what that is. Magical defense table, six, four, magic shield. This gives a plus two defense bonus and may be used by any character who could use a shield, not by barbarians, obviously. It's magic. The shield is indestructible, so it ignores any results that destroy it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, can Elric walk around with two shields? <laughs> I think so. Well, he's got a hammer, a shield, and a second shield. <laughs> uh did he have to switch weapons to cast his heal? I don't know. Uh, magic shield plus two defense bonus. Shields are normally one, so if he has that equipped, which I'm going to go ahead and do, his defense goes up to plus four. We need all the defense we can get against these guys. Okay. Um, what else? I think that's all the treasure. And now, let's do some XP rolls. So, who should we level up? I think we'll just, I think we'll figure that out randomly. Um, I'm going to pause here and be right back. Okay, I'm going to roll randomly to see... Uh, who levels up? We get three rolls. Um, two. So that's Elric. Elric needs to roll a six or better. And he gets a four. Okay, Elric fails the roll. Who's next? Two. Elric can't go again. Um, that is Throck. Here we go, Throck. Eight. Excellent. That's a success. Throck goes to level six. And his life goes to 13. Level 6 and 13 life. We're going to go ahead and uh, add a bubble here. And let's see. 
That's Throck. Excellent. We're going to keep track that Elric, my house rule is if you fail a roll, you get a, you get a plus one on your next XP roll. And, um, who's next? Either Blesk or Jim. Uh, one to three, it's Blesk. It's Blesk. So she rolls a six. She levels up. Excellent. I uh, keep track of who did level up and what order. So it was it was Elric, Throck, right? And then uh, and then Blesk. Because we can't do the same character twice in a row. Um so Blesk levels up. What does she get? She goes to level six. We could instead try to get expert skills, but I think we need health. <laughs> uh, I think we need levels first, at least a couple levels. Um, our health will go to 10. And she gets to cast one more spell. So, I, th I think that's everything. And now... Um, what we want to do, I think we're going to try to backtrack one room here and use our nails. This is a rule from uh, Fiendish Foes. If I show this here. Resting once per adventure, the party may rest in a room that has been cleared of monsters. Any adjacent rooms or quarters must also have been cleared. And this is the way it works. We've got to go back here. We're going to roll for random monsters. Oh, dear. That's a six. So no random monsters on our way back. Wandering monsters on our way back. And now we use um, some nails on each door. So Throck and Elric use their nails. And... Uh, we can spend some time in here. Everybody, what happens? Um, each character can recover one life point and one spent wizard spell or cleric power. So, Blesk, I'm going to count Blesk as a, as a wizard, <laughs> I guess. And, um, okay, excellent. Uh, Elric gets one of the, his heal back. So he's back to three. Heals available. And um, you guys can't see this. Uh, spells. Blesk now has three spells available. Now we do need to roll again for wandering monsters because it's possible. They come along and try to break open, bust open these doors we nailed shut. So, on a uh, one and six, and we don't. No wandering monsters. Excellent. Okay. Um, that is our rest. So, we'll go back here to room four. We're backtracking again. And we do get wandering monsters. <laughs> uh, and what are they? We're going to roll... Uh, the three on the wandering monster table is more minions. So let's go to the minions table. And what do we get? So we're still in room four. Uh, wandering minions. This is our, our, our minion count encounter count reset. And we have, oh geez, four. That flying skulls. <laughs> Three flying skulls. Okay, um, flying skulls. Three of them. One, two, three. Uh, level nine, undead. Normal treasure, crushing weapon, strike at plus one. Arrows strike at minus two. If a character rolls a one when attacking a skull in melee, the skull catches his weapon in his teeth and flies away. <laughs> Disarming the character, the skull will flee. And the weapon will be found again in the lair of the final boss. This is horrible. Oh, no. 
Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Well, at least we're carrying an extra hammer. <laughs> our, our good old spear carrier. Okay, three. Three flying skulls. Um, now, the deal is, since we nailed the doors shut, the wandering monsters would... N oh, no, no, no. This is not the rest. We walked in here, so we got attacked from behind by these wandering by these flying skulls so they do attack first okay um who do they not oh, let's see we're in a room so they could attack anybody who do they not attack um they do not attack bless no they do not attack alric unfortunately because he's the he's the one with all the cool anti-undead features all right, well, that makes... Oh, wait a minute. Is there hatred? Hatred. Do undead hate clerics? I'm looking at... There's a summary of hatred rules. Clerics add when attacking the undead? No. Okay. So, they attack everybody but Elric. All right. Throck needs to defend versus level 9. 4 plus 1 defense is 5. That's not enough. So, Throck. Oh, my goodness. I didn't do this. Before we we, uh, we rested and I gave them their powers back, but I didn't heal everybody by one. So this is coming from the rest. They all get healed by one. And then my intention would be to use the bandage as well. Everybody will use... Well, everybody except Alric, maybe... Throck and Blesk and Jim use their bandages. They did this during the rest. I just forgot to. So Throck has used his bandage. Elric hangs on to his. Blesk uses her bandage. And Jim uses his bandage. Okay. There is a hireling you can get, a surgeon. You can heal everybody for two. Once for oh, we have an elven bread. Should Blesk eat the elven bread? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna cross that off on my paper up here. One loaf of elven bread, and uh, Blesk just ate it, so she gets three health back. Okay. Alrighty, now <laughs> we're here. Now Throck failed to defend against a flying skull, and he takes a point of damage, right? Okay, Throck. One point of damage. Okay, and um, Elric does not get attacked. Blesk, uh, seven explodes. 12 um, plus her defense of 1 is 13 so she defends she's fine and Jim 4 plus his defense of 2 is 6 that's not enough so Jim Jim gets hit okay um <laughs> level 9 undead okay here we go Throck don't roll a 1 right it's crushing, we get, we strike at plus one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, that's his masterwork hammer. Okay. Uh, if the character rolls a one when attacking a skull in melee, the skull catches his weapon in his teeth and flies away, disarming the character. The skull will flee, and the weapon will be found again in the lair of the final boss. Oh, jeez. So now we're after the Veras and Lion Skin and Throx. Masterwork. Hammer. But that does mean one of the skulls flees. Okay. <laughs> That stinks. Uh, all right, so the spear carrier hands him his other hammer, his silver hammer. Um, okay, and now Elric. 
Elric rolls a two to attack. He adds his level versus undead is five, so that's seven. Um, I realized that probably, there's probably more I need to do when I leveled these folks up. Um, okay, two plus five is seven. Um, it's crushing, so that's eight, but that's not enough, I don't think, right? Yep, okay. Um, Blesk attacks. She does not have a crushing weapon. Uh, she rolls a six, though, with her sword. Um, thankfully, her sword doesn't get stolen. Six plus six is 12 attacks. She takes out one of the skulls. And now they do. The last skull does a morale check. Doesn't say they don't. And it does not flee. So Jim uh, rolls with his with advantage. He gets a five plus his attack of six is eleven. That's enough. That takes out even with his minus one. The attack that defeats the third flying skull. There's no treasure on wandering monsters. That's horrible. We, <laughs> all because we wanted to rest here. Um, did that even wind up helping us? All right. Well, let's see what is beyond this door. Um, 22 is going to look like this. 22. It's just a room. Three by three room. Oop. Takes us right to the edge of the map. And there would be a door on the north, but that would take us off the map. So we'll put a door here. We'll roll to see on a, uh, let's see, roll one or two. It's locked. It's not locked. Okay, so it's open. This is room five. We have finally made it to a new room. Uh, and let's see, Abyss flowchart, we'll roll 2d6, we get an 8, we've got more minions, <laughs> okay, uh, we'll roll d6, 2, 2d6 plus 1, ghouls, okay, 4, 5 ghouls, so this is minion encounter 2, Ghouls, we've got five of them. One, two, three, four, five. They are level eight undead. Um, normal treasure. Oh my goodness. One in six chance of being led by a ghoul king. Oh, please, please don't be. Okay, good. <laughs> a character wounded by a ghoul must save versus level seven poison or be paralyzed. Elves add their level to this save. A paralyzed character is automatically hit if attacked. The blessing spell removes paralysis. Yeah, see? I'm glad we saved the bless. Without a blessing, however, a paralyzed character must be carried out of the dungeon by his comrades. He will be killed by wandering monsters if left alone in the room. Okay. So we just need to keep Elric <laughs> from being paralyzed. Uh, wow. All right. We entered. Uh, we get to attack first <clears throat> Throck with his silver hammer uh, because that flying skull took his masterwork hammer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, I realized I wasn't showing any of that. Here's the ghouls up here. Um, that's the ghoul table. Okay, ghouls. Here we go. Throck, five. Um, I better look up. Does he get another? He gets, yeah, he gets plus six attack now because he leveled up. Um, plus six. Crushing, I guess, doesn't. Ghouls aren't skeletons. Plus six attack. That's pretty nice. Okay, f we rolled a five. Did I just roll that? <laughs> 11. Um, yep, so that takes out one ghoul. Okay. Elric is going to attack with his 
uh, one-handed hammer. He rolls a six plus his attack versus undead. He adds his level, so that's um, five. That's eleven. So he takes out a ghoul with his hammer. Blesk um, attacks with her sword. Two plus six is eight. Uh, that hits. Um, so she takes out a ghoul. And Jim, rolling with advantage, rolls a 7, uh, and that explodes. So that's 11, plus his attack of 6 is 17. Who leveled up? Just bless and throw. Okay. Uh, 17, minus 1, 16. So he does. He takes out two ghouls. Nicely done. We took those out fast. All right, one in six chance. I'm glad they didn't have a ghoul king. This is dangerous. The abyss is dangerous. <laughs> normal treasure. Okay, uh, normal treasure. Normal treasure. D8. Six. One random magic item from the abyss magic treasure table. Roll D6. Five. Filter of fire breathing. This potion renders its drinker immune to dragon fire attacks for the duration of one encounter. In addition, the drinker may breathe fire once, automatically inflicting two wounds to a boss or weird monster, or automatically killing two minions or vermin. Fire breathing has no effect on dragons. Uh, immune to dragon fire for the duration of one encounter. Who should we give this to? Filter of fire breathing. I'm writing it down over here. So the nice thing is they can breathe, breathe fire. We might save this for the final boss. Uh, I mean, unless we run into a dragon, but uh, automatically inflicting two wounds to a boss or weird monster. Filter. I'm, I'm assuming it's magic treasure, so Throck can't use it. So it's either Elric, Blesk, or Jim. Uh, this counts as their attack. Jim has a pretty sweet sword, so... And it's automatically inflicts, so I think, I think I'm going to give it to Elric. He can breathe fire on the <laughs> filter of fire breathing. Fire, breathe, filter of fire breathing. Elric. Okay, this is four against the abyss, page 51. We're going to give that to Elric. Okay, we're up here in room five. Let's see what is on the other side of this door. Right? I'm just checking our health. Jim and Throck are both pretty badly wounded, but they also have quite a bit of health up here. But if we run into a scenario where, like, if... Like that chaos, that dark lord. If Jim has to be a, a champion and face somebody by himself, he's they're both in real trouble. Um, Throck cannot use his healing potion. Should Jim drink his healing potion now? Um, uh, or should or should Elric cast heal on him? I think Jim will save his healing potion in case Elric gets incapacitated at some point. So we will have Elric cast heal on... Should he cast heal on both Rock and Jim? Or should we wait? Uh, let's, let's at least do Jim. So it's D6, 12. That's a lot. That was great. So Jim is completely healed. Mm, okay. I'm also looking at our level ups. So, Blesk leveled up. She actually... Uh, she might have a higher attack than what I have written here. Okay, I'll have to revisit Blesk. Um, her numbers may have gone up. But let's see what's... Let's see what's beyond this room. Uh, beyond this door, I mean. 15... Got a funky kind of 
dog-eared room here. So it comes in. Um, one, two, three. I'm coming in this door here, I think. Or we could make it easy on ourselves and come in that door. Let's go in this door, this bottom door. So we go over three and down two. One, two, three. Down two. And over one. Down two. Back. Three. All the way up and over. And we've got doors. Door up there isn't going to go anywhere for us. Oh, actually, no. These. This is this door here. And we've got a door over here. So this will be room six. Before we do anything else, let's see if either of those doors is locked. The west one is not locked. The southern one is. And its sturdiness is three. So that it's a minimum sturdiness of three. So maybe we make a higher mini, min, minimum. Minimum. Should we make a higher minimum? It's not going to matter. Anything under Jim's level or Throck's level, who's now level six, he could just bash out pills for. So any door, I mean, a one is an automatic failure. So two plus six is eight. Wow. It might not be worth doing this anymore because um, it's a rare chance they're going to come across something they can't just bash open. Okay, well, let's see what is... I guess there's a chance we just fail. It might, it might be more, more work than it's worth. Let's see. Um, the flow chart. What do we have in here? Four. Unique event table. Okay. Unique event table. Oh, no. I just saw Dark Plague. Okay, so... One. Book of Secrets. You find a book hidden under a loose stone. You may leave it alone or decide to pick it up and read it. A character of your choice can read the book and gain D6 clues. However, the character reading the book must save versus the number of clues plus two or gain D3 madness points. Whoa. Okay, let me think about this. <laughs> a character of your choice can read the book and gain D6 clues. So let's, let's say you get six clues. You must then save versus eight. Okay, so we'd have to roll a seven or eight. Or gain D3 madness points. And everybody already has one. In worst case, somebody would go up to four. And in Jim and Elric's case, uh, they would just one more madness would send them running off into the dungeon. Oh, uh, that's the worst case scenario. So, what does it say? Wizards add half a level to this save roll. These six clues, that's a lot of clues. Here's my house rule for secrets. Actually, I don't even need to house rule this. We're going to have Blesk. Blesk is going after... One of the things you can get is a new spell, and these spells are, uh, these abyss spells are pretty powerful. So, she could get four clues right off the bat right now and get a new spell. Do we do it? I'm going to do it. Book of Secrets, Under a Lost Stone. A character of your choice. So, Blesk is going to read the book, and she gains two. <laughs> two clues. Um... She already has one, so she's up to she's up to three. And the new spell is a the new spell secret is a, is a four against darkness. Um, it's a core rule thing, so I think she can get a spell. A new spell. But let's see, let's work this out here. Uh, the character reading the book must save versus the number of clues, so she's got to make a four. Um, she's got to get four or better. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, she got two clues, but she gains one to three mad, one to three madness points. So one to two is one. 
and so on. Oh, good. Just one. She gains a point of madness. Blesk goes a little bit crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, but let's do... Uh, let's look up that secret. So, a new spell. That's page 59 of the core rules. New spell. Only an elf or wizard may take this. Add a spell to your repertoire. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll to see. So if we go to... There is a spell table here somewhere. Okay. We'll skip it if it's mass teleport. Because she already knows it. But I'll roll randomly here. So d6... Two, infallible missile. Um, so, I don't... Does she get a free cast of it for learning? She might. Infallible missile. I'm going to say she finds... Uh, she, I don't know. I don't know what the rule is there. Sometimes you get a free cast when you gain a spell... Other times you don't. Um, I know you don't. The only time I know you don't get one is if you copy the spell in from a scroll. And maybe that's what happened here. She's learned it. It's in her repertoire. She's got enough information to prepare it, but it's not yet prepared. So, but that's a pretty that's a pretty great spell. Infallible missile kills single minion. Or minus one life to single boss. I think it automatically hits. Roll a die. If it explodes, damage the same or another target. And keep repeating. Eighth plus level wizards create two missiles per cast. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. Infallible missile. We should write down what we discovered here. Room six. Uh, Book of Secrets. Two clues, Blesk, um, Infallible Missile. Infallible Missile learned and plus one madness. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing with madness is does accumulate. It, it sticks around, but from adventure to adventure, so you've got to you've got to work to keep that low. All right, um, that's room six. I think, I think we'll, um, I think we'll stop there for now. We're about halfway through this dungeon, I think. So, and uh, this is proving quite dangerous. So, but we will play again soon. Until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.